Hello and welcome. My name is Lloyd Summers and today we're going to be talking about EMF detectors or electromagnetic field detectors, which I think is a really cool subject and something we want to talk about when we're talking about ghost hunting or the paranormal. Before we get into that though, I want to do a quick disclaimer. I am not an engineer and I'm not a scientist, but I do really respect the opinions of others. So if you think I've missed something in this video or if you think there's something that you'd like to add a little bit of your own experience on, please make sure to mention it in the comments. As well, this video is not sponsored. There are no affiliate links. I will list the parts below, but just be aware they are generic parts. You can get them from pretty much any company you're happy with. If you want to help, like, comment, or subscribe below. In this video, I want to talk more about what EMF is and, and what EMF is used for. And in the next video, we're going to talk more about what we're going to build and how we're going to build it. So if you want to jump more into the hands-on component, I recommend jumping to part two, where we go into that in a bit more detail. So what is EMF? Well, before we get into that, let's take a look at what ghost hunters are using EMF for. EMF detectors and EMF meters are a pretty standard piece of equipment when we're talking about ghost hunting and the paranormal. For example, if you look up ghost hunting on Wikipedia, you'll see EMF meters mentioned multiple times. And usually they're paired with infrared motion sensors or other devices such as digital thermometers. You'll also find that all of these are listed under skepticism, which I think is quite warranted. I'll go into this in a little bit more detail later, but EMF meters in of themselves aren't something I would rely on, but if it's supplementary and being paired with something else like a voice recording, I find that it can be a much more compelling story. Additionally, you'll see that EMF detectors are for sale online in quite a lot of places, and it's not uncommon to see an EMF detector running at $100 or more. Now, the EMF detector we're going to build is going to be a little closer to $7, and one of the things that makes me a little hesitant is when something says ghost meter in the name. I don't know this company. I don't know what they're going to modify or include in there, and I'm not sure if this is going to give me a false positive to try to make me think that their meter is better than someone else's. There are some other interesting Arduino projects for EMF detectors. This one from Celine W3 on Instructables is a good example. When I looked at this, it was really exciting. It's really close to what we want, but there's some key differences we're going to need to make. If you take a look at the antenna, it right now is running through a single resistor. I'd like to move this to a variable resistor so that we can increase and decrease sensitivity. At the same time, you'll see that this one's USB bound. We're obviously going to need to move that to a battery pack. And instead of using a larger Arduino Uno, we're going to switch to a smaller Arduino Micro. This will make it a little easier to get it more compact. Also, you'll see that there's a speaker on here. Right now, it works either on or off. What we're going to do is take this to an analog write, much like the analog read, so that the volume will change and the frequency could change depending on what EMF it's picking up. Finally, we're going to create a nice fancy case to put all of this in so that we can enclose it down into a nice handheld device. We're also not going to use the code that I see down below, but one thing I wanted to point out that I saw with multiple different Arduino projects is they tend to be doing some averaging out. What this means is it's taking 15 different readings and then coming up with an average from them all. This isn't wrong, but it does get rid of the peaks and valleys. And as you know, I'm more interested in some of the peaks and valleys rather than the averaging. I want to know when something spikes or goes away. By doing it this way, you could potentially be missing information. Before we get too much further along, I wanted to take a minute and kind of watch some videos about EMF and try to understand what it is we're getting into. I picked these at random, so hopefully I don't scare myself crazy before bed, especially because it's getting kind of late down here right now. This first video is from South Coast Paranormal and it only has 40 views. How about you tap twice in a row, just like boom, boom, just like that. Just like that. <laughs> oh. okay. Yeah. okay, that's a little compelling. Yeah, baby. We have noticed that you have uh, tapped it, and uh, if you could do it again, that would be. Oh my oh god. Oh my god. Twice. Could you tap it again if uh, you're in the room with us? Wow. Is somebody doing that? No. Is he going to knock? I'm not. So, that is a very interesting video. Uh, for two reasons. It is a little bit compelling, but at the same time, an EMF without any kind of other supplemental evidence makes it very difficult to rely on. I do think it's interesting that it was answering back to his questions, though, and I personally would be creeped right out. 
Now, this next one is from Doucette Ghosts. I listened to this one, and what I liked is that they had EVPs as well as EMF. Well, the answer's no. And come closer, but the answer's yes. Do you want us to stay here? Do you want us to go? Okay. So what they're doing is they're treating nothing as a no. So if it's, they're asking the spirit to step away, if nothing happens, that's a no. If it's a yes, then it steps close to the device. Do you like us? Are you a male? Are you a female? And what I thought was interesting is later on, they actually go in and show some of the EVP, actual EVP recordings. Now, they can be kind of hard to hear, so you probably won't be able to pick them up. But if you watch a couple of these videos, you'll see some of the EVPs and get an idea of what they sound like. Princess, princess room. Now this is her original bed. Original bed? Yeah, she slept in this bed all the way back in the mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so, crazy. Yeah. I like those old things to go. So you could kind of hear the voice in the background, but again, if you check out the videos and watch them end to end, you'll get a better feel. That one's a little more compelling to me because now there's more than one source of evidence. This last video, I did watch ahead of time, and I have to be honest, I don't entirely trust it. This is from Michael D. McGee. The reason why I don't trust it is with this type of hardwood floor, it's very common. Um, I don't want to say that it's not valid because that's not fair and it's not for me to say, but it's really easy for somebody to have a magnet underneath the floor and have a metal object that's being manipulated. But I did find it interesting that there's an orb that we'll see in this as well as some EMF recording. And watch up in the corner, you should see Just moved. I'll rewind it. So you can see what an orb looks like, which is another kind of contested subject as well. But as interesting as that is, a magnet would kind of trigger both, so it may not necessarily be proof of anything in of itself. I would have liked it much better if I saw that this was a plastic object or something non-metallic. But there you go. So that's some videos. They were a little uncomfortable, but not enough to make me not sleep tonight. Um, but this is one of the reasons why we are not going to be doing any of that crazy testing in here. So all in all, I thought that was pretty interesting. But what is EMF and what could be going on? Well, EMF is not necessarily a paranormal thing. It's used by science and it's all around us. Pretty much anything that's going through some kind of change um, is likely generating an electromagnetic field of some kind. We see this from people, animals, plants, the planet, the sun, your computer, your monitor, pretty much anything dealing with change in electricity is generating, in any likelihood, some kind of EMF. But that, on the other hand, is why it's kind of compelling to paranormal investigators. You have to remember, most of them are trying to seek evidence. So if they're looking for evidence, they're going to be, you know, doing different things, trying to capture video, audio, temperature evidence. And one really good way, if you look at it from another perspective, is they're trying to capture change. They're trying to capture a change in visual, a change in audio. And EMF, which is really good at detecting chemical change, has the potential to help capture their change. But where I prefer to see it is more supplementary. So if you have an audio recording that you're wondering, and there's an EMF uh, detection showing that there was a fluctuation, that tells me that a change did happen. It just may not be what we think it is. And if you compare that also with maybe a digital temperature or um, some kind of movement of an object, it gets to become more and more compelling. So I can see why EMF might be interesting to somebody in the paranormal who's trying to understand if there's energies there that we can't see. So that's it for our first video. In the next video, we're going to sit down and actually build an EMF detector and see what all the components are. And I really don't think it's going to be that hard. My goal is for us to get it around $7. 
So again, thank you. If you want to see more videos like this, please comment, like, and subscribe. The more subscribers we get, the more of these videos we can do. Thank you for hanging out with me, and I'll see you all in the next video.